In this lesson, we're going to review the gross anatomy of the kidneys. So let's start by answering the question, how big are the kidneys? Your kidney is roughly the size of your clenched fist, which suggests that kidney size is related to the size of a person. In fact, if we compare kidney size with height of the individual, we see that kidney size has a positive correlation with height. In other words, small people have smaller kidneys, while larger people have larger kidneys. For example, one study that used ultrasound to measure kidney volumes in milliliters found that the average kidney volume was 155 plus or minus 35 milliliters for females and 170 plus or minus 40 milliliters for males. They also found that the left kidney is about 5% larger than the right kidney. Let's put kidney size into perspective. The average person will display 65 liters of water while the kidney displaces 0.17 liters. This means that the kidney volume represents only 0.3% of total body volume. That's impressive considering the kidneys receive 25% of the cardiac output. So how does the kidney do this? Let's answer that by first examining the gross anatomy of the kidney. Let's start with the outside of the kidney which is covered by a thin, clear, fibrous capsule. The renal artery, vein, ureter enter and exit the kidney via the hilus, which is situated in the medial side of the kidney. The space just inside the kidney is referred to as the renal sinus space. It contains the uppermost part of the ureter, the renal pelvis, the major and minor calices, blood vessels, and nerves. The other important parts of the kidney are the cortex and medulla. Now the cortex is located in the outermost part of the kidney and is composed of nephrons and is highly vascularized. The other important part is the medulla, which is located towards the interior of the kidney. It is composed of parallel arrangements of tubules and small blood vessels. Now the tubules and vasculature located in the medulla are arranged into bundles that form conical structures, which are referred to as renal pyramids. Now the tip of the renal pyramid is perforated, which allows urine formed in the nephrons to flow into the minor calices. Two or three minor calices empty into the major calice. The major calice then empties into the renal pelvis, which empties into the ureter, which then empties directly into the bladder. Finally, it's important to note that once the ultrafiltrate leaves the renal pyramid and enters the minor calices, it is referred to as urine. 